Hi everybody, my name is Osiris, and this is going to be my first attempt to fix a PS3 with the yellow light of death. I'm going to use the heat gun method, and by the way, this is my first video for my YouTube page. So I hope you people, you know, you guys like it, Hello, and right, any um, comments are we're gonna all attempt welcome. Method. Thank you. You've seen a heat gun. This heat gun has two settings, one at 570 degrees, and the other setting is at 1000 degrees. So far, I watched a couple of videos. The average time is about 7 to 10 minutes uh, and the average temperature that people done this is around 500 to 700 degrees. Uh, being that this only has two settings, I'm um, going to use a 570 degree settings for a good 10 minutes or so and hopefully this fixes the problem. So here we go. I'm going to use my timer and we begin. So right now basically what I'm doing is just heating up the board evenly and we'll flip it back. We'll continue this process. Going in nice round slow circle to get even heat distribution throughout the motherboard. So far we've been a, about a minute and 30 seconds. A little touch, we'll see how hot the board is. It's uh, pretty, going to get pretty hot. It's a good sign. And we will now begin heating up the GP, uh, the RSX chip, which is the reality synthesizer, and the cell processor chip. So we're going to focus our heat on these areas for the next seven minutes. We don't want to get too close to the motherboard chip and uh, this may actually overheat the silicon and co uh, cause some extra damage which is what we don't want. So we're just going to keep on doing nice slow circles. Uh, we still got about 6 more minutes um, and we just have to focus our heat in these two chips right here. The RSX, the reality synthesizer chip and the cell processor chip.
We got another five minutes left. I'm gonna pause the video here and we'll come back a minute before this is over. Okay guys, and we're back. We're almost done heating this thing for at least 10 minutes. Three minutes to warm up the whole motherboard and 10 full minutes at 570 degrees to see if we melt some of that solder inside those chips. Hopefully everything is working and we haven't burnt our two processor chips. Um, next 30 seconds, I'm going to increase the heat to a thousand and hopefully this works. Okay, we'll put the temperature back down to 570. We're at a thousand right now, and we stop. As you seen before, we stop, and we're gonna let this cool down for a minute. So what I'm gonna do is, since this thing that has no other temperature settings. So we're going to keep the heat on from far away for a total cool down of 4 minutes. That way the sudden change of heat doesn't crack any of the metal, doesn't cause anything to warp or any, or what, or any other parts to get damaged. So basically I'm still at the lowest temperature this thing has which is 570 degrees. And I'm pretty much just blowing hot air all over the motherboard at a distance of about 14 inches for at least 3 minutes or 2 minutes. We'll, give this a, we'll just give this a minute and a half. Uh, Hey, that this seems like it's good to go. Okay, be careful with the heat gun. At the point is extreme, okay, guys. Hot. So now that we're done with this, uh, we're gonna let this cool down for a good forty-five minutes. Uh, as the other videos have stated, do not, by all means, do not touch or move the board. Uh, this may cause more damage to this. Um, and we'll check back on this. In 45 minutes to an hour. Alrighty then. So I've already finished putting back the PS3 together. Uh, I finished putting the thermal paste on top of the PS3 chipsets. And we'll give this a try. See if it works. Hopefully it does. Excellent. So there you have it. Um... All and right, so there we have it, a working PS3 unit. unit. And yes, before I get any <coughs> negative comments, I did fix the PS3 issue that I had at the corner that sort of didn't seal properly. I snapped that back into place. I had to just take it apart for a bit. And pretty much it's been on for the for the, for the whole day. I mean, I left the running the game uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I left the running that game on one of the levels where there's a lot of uh, interaction. So that GPU processor is really, you know, working hard. So it gets hot. And that way it helps set in place the the GPU and the RSX chipset. It sets the compound in place as it seals and it cures. Uh, any future tips to prevent this from happening? Well, I would say keep the ports clean. Uh, don't play for long periods of time. And uh, keep it in a well-ventilated area. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll see if I post more videos up. Thank you.